The challenge the entire automotive industry is facing now is how to cut emissions. But there are many ways to do that. Diesel has fallen out of favor, and electric power faces many hurdles. But other alternatives are often overlooked. Cortez de Manuel is well aware of how controversial diesel is. But what's the alternative? The German government is pushing electric and hybrid drives, but they're costly to make and to buy. So for now, Volkswagen is developing cars that run on CNG, or compressed natural gas. Specifically, natural gas is almost all methane. When burned in an engine, it releases about 25% less CO2 than gasoline does, and less particulate matter and nitrogen oxide. So VW will be offering a CNG version in each of its range lines. Jens Anderson of Volkswagen flatly rejects the notion that the auto industry will be able to go all electric with batteries in the near future. He insists that's physically impossible, even if there are many transportation needs that can be adequately met by battery electric vehicles. And CNG should not be seen as a competitor to electric drive, but rather as a complement. He agrees that long-chain and cyclic hydrocarbons must be phased out, but says more can be done with conventional drivetrains, and here methane is especially attractive mehr tun bei den konventionellen Antrieben und da ist der Betrieb mit Methan besonders attraktiv. The newest member of VW CNG family is the Polo TGI. It's powered by a three-cylinder bivalent engine, meaning it can use two kinds of fuel. In addition to the gasoline tank, it carries two natural gas tanks under the floor of the trunk. Running on natural gas, the Polo consumes 3.2 kilograms per 100 kilometers and emits just 87 grams of CO2 per kilometer. Zunächst erstmal Anderson explains that Volkswagen has specially designed the engines to run on natural gas. So they don't have to be converted after the fact. The engine's operation has to be dry and smooth, so VW has redesigned the cylinder heads. It's something the company is able to add across its engine range. Methane can not only be extracted from non-renewable sources, but also from renewable alternatives, in biogas plants, for example. This is another important factor in preserving the environment. Emmanuel points out that natural gas cars cost much less than electric or even hybrid cars. He takes the Polo as an example. The natural gas version started just under 20,000 euros in Germany. Are the CNG models worth the additional 7,000 euros over the purely gasoline-powered models? Maybe not in the short run, but longer term, a lower fuel consumption not only saves money at the pump, but helps preserve the environment by cutting down on CO2 emissions. Anderson emphasizes that this is not just a stopgap solution. He says in the long term we'll have to learn to deal with natural gas power alongside battery electric power. And judging by the current state of technology, we'll also have to deal with fuel cell-powered vehicles. So it would be a good idea to learn to handle natural gas energy sources. Emmanuel adds that the advantage over an electric vehicle is that you can simply drive to the filling station, fill the tank in less than 10 minutes and drive on. But once an electric vehicle's battery is empty, you have to plug it in, and then you can't drive anywhere until it's recharged. But what does it feel like to drive a Polo TGI? The natural gas Polo is too loud for Emmanuel's taste, the engine doesn't run smoothly, but he says that has less to do with the natural gas and more to do with the three cylinders. Otherwise, it's hard to see or feel any difference between gasoline and CNG drive, so using natural gas doesn't mean giving up any of the fun of driving. Aside from the lower purchase price, another plus for the natural gas polo over electric drive is that range is no concern.
Emmanuel once again reminds us of the advantage of the natural gas pool using both CNG and gasoline. Once the natural gas tank is empty, you can keep going on gasoline until you reach the next natural gas filling station.